I think we often mistake the future for what it is. We imagine it's a place invented by scientists and technologists, and we miss that actually the future is quite simple. It's created by changes in our own behavior. It's a human phenomenon. And you know, business leaders and organizations around the world are commencing this amazing adventure at the moment, which is this adventure of digital transformation. And for me, digital transformation it's not about technology. In fact, the least important part of that concept is the word digital. Because digital transformation really is the active reimagining of our organizations from the perspective of a new generation who've grown up surrounded by sophisticated smartphone technology. Because what did you do as your young children were growing up, as they started crying and demanding your attention? In that very moment, you realized that Steve Jobs had in fact invented the world's greatest 21st century babysitter. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> it worked perfectly, but did you consider what you did? Because at that moment, when you handed that device to your young child, you actually started a process of neurolog neurologically remapping the entire structure of their mind. The way they communicate, the way they saw the world, the way they frame reality, the way they understood how they get their entertainment and content, all of that was reshaped in that moment. And we're only at the very beginning of trying to understand now the implications this will have as this generation gets older, joins the workforce, become consumers, and start making decisions for themselves. If you don't believe me, just consider how much your own behavior has changed in the last five years. Every business in the future will be a data-driven business. One of my favorite examples is this company called Rent the Runway. It's an amazing idea. Uh, they worked out that the uh, average woman in America buys over 50 outfits a year, new outfits a year, which is very expensive, very time-consuming. So they set up this new business, these uh, two uh, amazing women for, uh, who'd been to Harvard, which basically rents out and sends out over 90,000 dresses a day to over 5 million members. They run America's largest dry cleaning facility. But here's the thing, it's not a fashion business. It's a data and logistics business. There's almost no category of business that will not be transformed by this digital revolution. So how will you prepare your people to think and understand and work in this way. What are the most valuable skills that your employees and co-workers will need to learn to solve 21st century problems? I don't know about you when you were growing up. Uh, I grew up in the 80s, which means that the, the kind of game that all the kids played when I, when I was at school was uh, the Rubik's Cube. Now, I was terrible at this game. Uh, in fact, this was my attempt at solving the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> but it's interesting to think how kids today would approach this problem. You know, Jeanette Wing, who's the head of computer science at Carnegie Mellon University, wrote a very influential paper where she argued that, in some ways, 21st, 21st century literacy was something she called computational thinking. It may be more important in the future to teach kids not to program computers, but to think like a computer. In other words, can they take a problem and break it down in a way that computers can help them solve it, to see patterns? What does it take to build a culture of transformation? In other words, what is it that these very digital, very innovative, very fast-moving companies do and know that the rest of us and big traditional companies seem to miss? So my starting point on this is simple. Startups don't count. If anyone ever comes to you and tells you that startup X, Y, or Z has an amazing culture, just laugh at them. 
Because, quite frankly, if you can't have great culture when you have 10 people, you've got a serious problem. It's much harder when you have 1,000 people or 10,000 people. Big companies have a unique challenge. You've heard about it, 70%. The estimated number of US workers that are non-engaged, who are estimated to cost American companies anywhere between $450 and $550 billion a year in lost productivity. These people are more likely to steal, more likely to negatively influence, miss work days, and drive customers away. Look to the person next to you. If they're not taking notes, you know, we know who we're talking about. But you know, they worked out that only 41% of employees actually even knew what their company stood for and how its brand was any different to its competitors. This is a disaster. You're not going to fix this by having a tug of war or having casual Fridays or free beer. Free beer might work. <laughs> but all the traditional levers of engagement are not going to change this number. Because at the heart of this, I think, is a problem of scale. You know, when companies get big, you lose your sense of perspective, where you fit in, um, what your purpose is. As we start to think about this, I want you to realize that it, you're not alone. It's not just traditional businesses that are struggling with this idea of engagement and kind of mass learning and innovation. Some of the world's most innovative companies struggle with it. You know, Reed Hastings uh, famously said that the thing that keeps him awake at night is talent density. What he's terrified is that he's going to start one day hiring people that are more pro process-driven than performance-driven. You know the process-driven people, right? They're the ones who want to keep adding pages to the employee handbook, right? Performance-driven people aren't so concerned about the rules and regulations. They're there to work out how to constantly improve what the company does from the perspective of the customer. We're moving into a new world, a world where business itself is going to be forced to change by a new generation, your kids who are growing up in a world dominated by smartphones. They're a living challenge to all of us to now rethink the way we do business. So please do just that. Think big, think new, but most importantly, think quick. Because if there's one thing I can tell you with absolute certainty, it is this. The future is now. Thank you very much.